In the name of the one who loves the beloved and love itself, amen. Please be seated. The text I want you to really have in mind as I preach is from the end of Colossians. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you will be revealed with him in glory. I'm going to read it again. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you will be revealed with him in glory. And I'm going to get to that, but I have to start with a little bit of verbal processing. I sometimes process out loud. I had a bit of a day um, already, and I'm just going to tell you about it. Uh, like, I have a dog. Um, you know she's precious and I love her, but she's a bit difficult. She was a COVID baby. Um, she has all those personality ticks and difficulties. Um, and she was in my Easter vlog, my video blog that I made on Thursday. Um, and I am told that she stole the show. I was lying on a piece of grass and she was just having fun with the grass and rolling over and wanting belly rubs and all that stuff. That is the picture that she presents to you. Um, it is the curated image. Um, let me tell you, last night after I got home from the Easter Vigil, um, there was something strange in the house, but I couldn't quite tell what. Um, I went and found her sitting sheepishly on the bed. Somehow she had kind of nails and fur caked with something. And I'm like, oh, if she's gotten into something, normally I can see the, the damage around bits of the house, and I, I couldn't find anything. I figured out that she'd got into some flour which apparently I, as a bad parent, had left out on the side, um, ready for kitchen cooking today. Um, but I couldn't see it. She had managed to hide all of it until I walked back into the living room and looked at the couch. The couch had been behind me as I walked into the house with the lights on low. Um, it was carnage. The couch was covered with flour. Um, she had apparently had some fun with that. I have checked on the online vets and um, she may have consumed some of it, but I think she's going to be okay. She might have a slight funny tummy, but she'll be okay. Um, I really wish that she'd kind of almost been covered with flour and ghost-like, because that would have that would have made some sense for the sermon. Um, but she was not. She'd managed to turn the flour into like baked on cake in her claws and fur. Um, so I had a little bit of a crestfallen moment last night, and it made me think. That this is the image of ourselves that we don't present to the world. <laughs> the image of ourselves when we are covered in flour or the world's fallen apart or everything's terrible. There's a version of ourselves that we like to be seen as and there's a version of ourselves that we don't like to be seen as. Um, I'm afraid I did not fully deal with all the details of the problem last night. But I got up this morning and cleaned up, put all the linen in the wash, threw the dog in the shower. Um, <laughs> She is now fluffy and beautiful and clean, and it's really nice, back to the image that we like to present to the world. I wonder if you have two versions of yourself, the self that you know to be honest and true and the self that you present to the rest of the world. As I look at you all this morning, I realize I don't know all of you entirely. I know some of you to some extent. I know some parts of you. Some of you I've had a sit-down conversation with in which you've shown me what the flower-strewn version of yourself looks like. And then I know a bit more. And then also, after time in pastoral ministry, sometimes we get to know people through phases, through moments that have changed over time. We see growth and we see development. On Easter Day, I'm really contemplating the people that we will all become and that none of us know just yet. And that's why I want to go back to that text. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. What this says to me is that none of us know quite who we will become. There is a process of becoming that takes place in our faith in which we are transformed over time into the people that we will become. And the people that we will become will reflect God's glory. And actually, the flower-strewn version of ourselves, the messy version of ourselves, is an essential part of that. 
You know, we've just gone through Holy Week. We get to Easter Day and it's really full of joy and full of life and full of light and bunny rabbits and chocolate eggs and all of that. But we've gone through Good Friday and we've left up the stations of the cross that some of the cathedral artists made and we've left them around for you to look at. And I want to draw your attention to one of them, which is the 14th station on the my left, your right. It's broken glass on the inside of some artboard suggested by some of the artists I was working with to create the idea of looking into a tomb. Except seeing yourself in the broken glass in the tomb and recognizing that the world around us is dying, that we are dying, that there are parts of us that actually in some ways we'd quite like to let go of. And in our Christian faith, we really believe that as Jesus dies, we in some way die with him so that we might be brought to life along with him as well. On Good Friday, I talked about the fact that the cross holds up a mirror to the whole world. The injustice that Jesus experienced is not just limited to that moment in time in history, but economic systems, political systems, criminal justice systems, are all deeply corrupt and problematic, and we occupy them. And in some very real sense, the chaotic versions of ourselves, we're in, implicated in the darkness of the world around us. We're implicated in the injustices, in the suffering. We have experienced pain ourselves, and we have caused pain ourselves. And I ended with that dark image on Good Friday, but I said we've got to get to Easter Sunday to hear the rest of the story, and here it is. Jesus comes to new life. He doesn't stay dead. The cross cannot defeat him. The terrible situations that we can see in the world around us are not the final word. And if we are willing to go through the spiritual process of dying with him and being brought to life in him, with him, we will become something quite extraordinary. And we can begin to influence the world around us. And in the light of Christ, make it a better place. Let me give you an example. Last night at the Easter Vigil, we come in in darkness and I can't see anybody. But then gradually, everyone starts lighting a little candle, and you kind of hold a candle under your face. And it's one of my favorite moments of the year, um, and we almost forgot the candles, but we didn't. Um, I was sitting up here looking out at you, and I can see all your faces dimly illuminated with candlelight. I begin to see the light of Christ reflected in your faces, but it's very dim. It's very dim. I can't quite see exactly who you are yet. And then when we get to the moment of the resurrection, we flip all the lights up. The whole place becomes full of light, and I can see everybody really clearly. And that's what I really think is going on in our journey of faith. Right now, I can see you all a little dimly. But one day, I will fully see the glory of God revealed in every one of you. And I'm looking forward to that. St. Irenaeus says that the glory of God is a human being fully alive. The glory of God is a human being fully alive. And you are invited to life today. You're invited to recognize all of those things that keep you half alive, not fully alive. You're invited to recognize all of those things that you could really let die on Good Friday in order to allow something new to come about which is really beyond beautiful. The thing I want to end with is we had six people come and make new statements of faith last night at the Easter Vigil. And the bishop and I and Jerry and the team of Journey with Jesus had a chance to sit with them before the service for about an hour. And as we talked, they talked about their journey of faith, which was very personal, 
and very individual. But as they talked, they shared with us how they were coming to be, how they were becoming as people of faith. The whole journey from a moment of uncertainty into a moment of conversation, into community life here amongst us. In the middle of their storytelling, one of, us, one of them told us about a very personal story of having struggled massively in the past and having been helped by somebody. That was decades ago. And then finding that the person who helped them was then in the journey of Jesus group with them this last year. And they didn't recognize each other at first. But that person who was seeking and exploring faith had been the transforming person in their life decades earlier. And we had to stop and recognize that the glory of God was revealed. In the middle of that story, in that moment, with those people becoming who Christ is calling them to be, the problems of our world will be addressed as we all allow the light of Christ to shine through each of us. And we can be inspired to do that today by Christ's resurrection life. So, when Christ who is your life is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. I'm looking forward to meeting you. Amen.